These techniques are just as good in painting buildings. As sure. Yeah, all the techniques that you use, whether it's on buildings, aircraft, or armor, they're all basically the same. You're just applying different colors at different amounts to get different effects. Is that you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. It's all very similar. Um, I've, I've painted brick buildings using a lot, a lot of these same methods. Okay, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to, here we have, we have our dark gray, but I want more of a base coat with um, some lighter grays in it too. So I'm just, again, just to show you guys what can be done now. When you guys are doing this, you don't necessarily have to do all these steps. Um, wrong word. Shoot. Okay. Thank you. New, new, brand new bottle of white paint too. <laughs> um, we're going to use lacquer thinner. I'm glad we got through that winter camel one because when you're dealing with layers of hairspray and stuff, sometimes it, it, it doesn't always do what you want it to do, so it's always the most stressful one. This one's much more fun to do in front of a crowd. <laughs> So you travel to Russia to do seminars? Uh, well, my, my, my um, company is located outside of Russia oh, in, a, okay. in a suburb called Kadesnagurs, which is really part of Russia now as a result of urban sprawl, you know. Russian sprawl? Yeah, Russian sprawl. Ur yeah, urban sprawl or whatever. Yeah, so it's all like one big city. And, you know, when you're working with, when you're painting steel plates, you're working with a lot of different colors together in layers, so it's very forgiving. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Bill. Bill, thanks, Bill. Yeah, thank you. So we're um, let's, to give us a little more tone. I'm gonna airbrush on just like a neutral gray. You focus more around the edges. Okay. Okay, so here's our here's our basically our base coat. Okay, everybody, again, please you know, don't hesitate to ask questions. All right, so that's okay. a steel. Uh, yeah, we're painting a steel plate. Okay, okay. and this is kind of our first start. You just gray paint or what's up now? What kind of paint or uh, what color? Um, it's just a, a real light gray tone that I mix. Okay. Yeah. So we'll um. Yeah. But that was a tamiya, right? Uh, yes, tamiya will lack it thinner. Yeah. I'm just again. And that's it. <laughs> Seeing this is great because when I was in uh, Iraq, they shipped us steel sheets and stuff. Best called, example. Stuff called hard ox. Yeah. And it came off the uh, shipping containers in a, uh, a, a almost a gunmetal color. Yeah. And then it just started rusting in no time. So I'm really anxious to see how this comes out because yep. I'm willing to do some uh, awesome. hard ox plates for. Uh, one of my projects. One of the first ones that I did um, where I used this on, I painted a, um, a, a front end, a NATO front end loader for MIG Productions that was in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And it had that, that steel cladding all over it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this was all about. That's kind of where, and since then I've just painted um, uh, just, you know, vehicles, just rusty tones. Like that, um, I did a T-34 like this a while back. Thanks. Echelon even did a set of the uh, Hardox stencils to put on the. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. To replicate the uh, sheet markings. Well, what's cool is what I like also about those those you call them hard on. Hardox. Hard. Hardox. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's gonna get edited. That's gonna get edited. Right? Edit that out. Get the dump button. Get the dump button. Yeah, um, I, just went, I just went to the blooper and realized all. Oh. <laughs> yeah, know what you're up to. Uh, yeah. I know. Well, uh, so when using that hard rock stuff, what I like too is they paint like the slogans on them, like their favorite radio stations from back home and yeah. stuff. Like I one of the stations in my town is WBLM. I put WBLM on it. And even though I'm not a big BLM fan, it would be popular enough. Okay, we're gonna use light color for the picture of that. That is gone. Who's <sighs> Helen? Let's see. Let's try to have some method to this here. Make them look somewhat right. I'm just gonna put a bunch of.
your color selection does that just come from uh, experience yeah. or is there kind of a method to it um it's both um you, you really um I, I found that and i'm sure you, you probably know the same thing is that um all the after a while you just kind of become familiar with a bunch of colors from your favorite brands that you use and you're usually just using the same eight colors from this, this typical brands you like you know like to my buff i use it for absolutely everything from weathering to mixing dark yellow and this these here it's um i found over time i've just become i just become used to mixing the primaries of red blue yellow and of course <coughs> black and white and i can pretty much get anything from it you know but for rust tones it's real easy um um, you just take like here you got yellow red blue this is a good maroon that I can use alone without mixing it with anything and I'll just um, I'll take a brush and I'll just mix the rest of the colors very quickly um, let's see um, I'll even I'm going to take this over here and add some blue to it give me a dark gray okay similar to this base coat coat okay and then um, take the yellow. And you get these nice orange tones. And again, this is just our base coats, okay? And, um, um, what I did two way back um, was when I first really got into painting a lot, I went down to an artist supply store and you can buy those color wheels mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those that's what really and once after a while you realize it's all pretty easy and you you get it all memorized and uh, I, I used to rely on them I don't anymore I, I the hardest one for me to really get used to mixing with the other colors it's always blue always blue always blue you know it's uh, it takes so much yellow I was saying someone earlier it takes so much yellow to make the color green when you mix it in with blue, but yet so much little, little, little amount of blue when you mix it in with yellow to get the color green. You know, understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Now I'm gonna <coughs> take this sponge. And yeah, part of my my dirty hands, guys. But I just feel much. I feel more comfortable when I'm. Um, <laughs> I know. You can you know, brush it on lightly, or you can hit it hard. So that's like a little sponge you got there. Correct. Yeah, you, you know, you buy like a stereo system or something. You can take that yeah. pad now, just yeah. steal it from there, and you can cut it out. Probably should have brought a little more. I thought this might be enough. It should be. Um, we'll uh, worry about it as we go. How about that? And then, you know, you want to keep it kind of random. What I'm doing here. see that so far no okay so it's, it's real simple techniques okay one of the guys mentioned uh, makeup makeup sponges work or is the cell structure in them too fine I couldn't answer that question but I would imagine sure I mean there's all kinds of different sponges out there so I'm, you know, I think it would um, okay now we're gonna here's a uh, like a maroon dark maroon color and I'm gonna add this the makeup sponges are a little too fine. Are they? They, they okay. look like crap compared to that. Okay. Yeah, your makeup jobs look so tacky. <laughs> <laughs> I use a roller. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, here's our second mar more of a maroon tone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the most out of these sponges. Okay, um, I'm still not happy. I think um, I think that red still a little. That red rust is still a little too red rust. So we're gonna add a little more green to make it less red rust, more maroon rust, and that looks a little better. You guys like? Light think color that? acrylics straight out of the bottle. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Light color acrylics are good too. I, I do a lot of work with them. 
Um, okay. Um, this that does look better. You think so? Yeah, I'll add a little more yellow too. How about that? Yeah, because it was a little too vibrant before, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that's a pretty neutral, old-looking rust tone there. I, and that's fine. We just, again, we're just doing base coats. All this is going to, we're going to go over this all after with enamels, so. See that okay? Mm -hmm. You all see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're building it up in layers, okay? You don't need to wait to dry? Um, no, not, no, it's pretty forgiving. We, we want that. Was it you that asked <coughs> that question? Oh, you, uh, <coughs> yeah, we kind of want that muddle appearance. So even if you're, if you're mixing some of the colors in with each other, it's okay, it doesn't matter so much. Right? You're blending colors. I'm kind of, um, no, they, they're pretty much dry. I'm going over them with, you know, um, I'm going to probably need a more of a, I'm going to have to probably mix one more color after this one. Um, and this is a nice little, nice little rusty color right here. Okay, and I'm going to Give it a nice rust thing around the sides, and those plain cut edges that I showed you. You can airbrush it, or you can do it this way. Probably a pretty easy way to get different rusting uh, patterns over various parts of your tank. Where it is, and it's it's quick. Yeah. You know, it's really quick. But this is, yeah. And again, you want to kind of keep it random. I'm going to hit it heavier here. And again, if you screw up and you put too much in one area like this, uh, it's real simple. You just let it dry. And you can just go back over it with the other colors, okay? Like this, for example. So you can always go back and forth between techniques. There's no reason why you should. If you make a mistake, it's no big deal. And if you guys want to stick around for the chipping part, too, I'll show you how to make, fix mistakes doing that, too. So I'm just going to go back over this. It's real shape. difficult to it's screw it up. Wonderful. And you can add so much contrast between yeah. details and yeah. highlight things with it. It's a really good, good thing. Mm. So um, what, am, what am I going to do now? And like you said, different steel rust different in different ways. Of course, yes. Um, I'm listening to you. I'm just I'm trying to. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, it's really nice. You can do it. It's, it's, it really is. It's fun, too. It's a lot of fun. It's yeah. therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, 
so easy. <laughs> it is. It really is easy, though. Yeah. I mean, okay, what we do now, remember that vertical line I showed you where you have another piece laying on top of it in storage, so it creates that capillary mm -hmm. action? Mm -hmm. We'll do one of those real quick. You do a couple if you want. I mean, I've even done this whole thing doing doing the hairspray technique. Okay. Is that something you'd like to do? You do like on the back side of German uh, Schurzen? You know, Schurzen's painted on one side. I don't know if it's painted on the other side. I don't. I think it is, but yeah, sure, you could do it this way. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, I don't know. I got. Um, I wish I had brought more slides. I didn't know you guys would be asking so many questions, <laughs> but it's, it's a good thing. Um, I'm going to use life color. Um, uh, yeah, you can do it on the other parts of a hall that haven't been painted, for example, or maybe an open storage bin. I, I painted a, a Stalin tank where the one, all, you know, you know, JS, are you familiar with JS3 and all? Where part of the sheet yeah, outside yeah. it. St and, Stalin. Yeah, it had been ripped off, so all the metal underneath was exposed looking like this. So, and it was really a lot of fun. An easy way to do a, a field repair of damage where they just weld a plate. There over you go. Or, or like what he was saying with the. Um, uh, Careful. I know. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, what is it again? Something on. Hard ox. Hard ox. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. You think I'd figure that out, huh? <laughs> so, ox is for oxidation. What's the hard for? It's it's uh, spelled H A R D O X X, and it's uh, I don't know if it's a type of steel or if it's a brand, oh, oh, I see. but it came uh, stenciled on on all the uh, sheets. It might have been the a brand, manufacturer. Huh? It's, it's it's a brand of a, a Swedish manufacturer. Uh, I'm an engineer for a company that makes uh, concrete mixes, and we use hardox for the barrels and the fins because it's very hard, oh, very wear resistant. Mm -hmm. Artist and get all those colors mixes. Adam, you ever take any art classes like foundational? Um, in Downs, high colors, mediums. Yeah, in high school, but I really do. I, was, I don't know, I was kind of bored. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just me being immature. It well, I, mean, I, I don't know if it really tunes you into the vocabulary and the basics of what we're doing on the models. Um, yeah, the vocabulary. You know, like sometimes when I'm giving seminars, you know, I. Uh, I find my vocabulary not to be so broad with some of the different terms for art. Um, I've had to, a lot of it when I'm writing an article, I'm using like the word contrast. I use that a lot. And one day I just had to go on an article I wrote with a thesaurus and, okay, can I use another word for contrast here? <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, you know, when people are reading your work and stuff, um, you want to look smart. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't. I, I, I'm more of a technical background. Right. Okay. Adam, I think we all appreciate the way you mix. We've been to seminars where people are very precise. Forty percent, thirty-three percent, two percent, one. You just dump until give, it looks about right. I love that. Yeah, me too. Huh? That's what people well, want. I want. I want the formula. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That's, that's the formula. Yeah. Who was it? When I filmed that uh, authentic metal DVD with M Expression, um, the guy who was the owner of M Expression, the guy who was he was also directing it and everything. That's what he said. He just said he'd worked with a few other guys. He saw what I was doing. He just couldn't believe the mess I made, but yet the work <laughs> I did, it always came out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so here you're not afraid of lifting off any paint after you put that thing down? Uh, no, usually it, it sticks on pretty good, especially if you're using like a, a lacquer paint or something. But the sure. life color, if you use a good um, primer, that won't give you a problem either. Okay. All right. All right. Hmm. Again, um, uh, some of these acrylics, they go on a bit opaque, so you got to let them dry and put on a few coats. That might be enough. Okay, so here, you got this. That's easy for you to say. All right, Alan, you 
now it's a cigarette lighter. Right? <laughs> 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 all right, guys. All right. Anyway, all right, enough of that. That's the other creative part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, I'm just, maybe we could add some highlights to the corners where it was flame cut. <laughs> and uh, we'll a little randomly on the middle and here and there. Okay. Okay. All right, that looks good. We'll call that good. Cut that with water, right? Uh, nope. I use their uh, acrylic right, thinner. Right. Whenever you use an acrylic, use use the brand. Remember, like um, um. Uh, sorry, lacquer paints like Tamai and stuff. Uh, they're not so. They're more flexible, but I found like with Vallejo Life Color, as similar as they are, I would stick with their own, um, in their own thinners and their own brush cleaners. You know, a lot of the articles I've written, I've stressed it to people. It will just save you a lot of headache. One moment, let me just get make sure my brush is clean. So the Life Color brand that you're using now is that just your uh, manufacturer of choice, or is this what you just threw in the box? Uh, manufacturer choice. I use Life Color a lot. They have a lot of different colors, and the price is right. It's better than some of the other products coming out now. Um, and them in Vallejo, uh, they, they both work okay for me. And I've, like I've been using them both for a long time, for, since I've been doing it professionally. It just Um, what we can do is I'm going to, before we go forward, I'm just going to go back to the trusty old sponge and I'm just going to... Can you show your... your uh, yeah, I can, your yeah can, I, can I do this one more te thing and then we'll, sure. we'll pass it around, all right? And I'm not talking about the, the pipe, I'm talking... <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I'll do is... Um, Just put this tape back on real quick. Back off of the line. Like one of these two models here, how many hours do you get put into one uh, of the I can, Well, I do it professional. I do it full time, so to paint something like that, to like paint the whole thing with the color modulation and all that stuff, it's taking about three weeks. Wow. Yeah. But again, you don't have to do all these techniques. I'm just showing you right. what you can do, yeah. you know? And I'm just going to put some scrape marks on here. We're using the sponge. You're right. Andy, do you build your models too? Or you have somebody else build them? For you? No, I do my. I build my own models. I got, I'm too particular. Um, I've had some built for me. The like sex builds a few for me, but I, I'm, I'm just. I, I like everything to be like just right with it. And I usually would like with the photo etch battle damage and stuff on the fenders, I know exactly what I want to do. And, um, that's that's just my you know, I've had a lot of people offer and I've I've done a few that have been built for me for commissions, but okay, here's where we are now. Okay. So being a professional model builder, you must have the least <coughs> favorite part of the process, which is your least favorite part. Detail case and assembly. Cutting off the screws. Um, you know, the photo etch is really fun at first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted to photo etch. But that's once it comes, once you've been doing photo etch for about a week straight, yeah. and, uh, it's like crack. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. fun at first, yeah. yeah. It is. It's really fun at first. It allows you to be really creative. Um, I don't know why. Excuse me, guys. Um, Okay, now we got uh, we got a nice acrylic base coat there. It should be almost pretty dry. So now we can switch over and, and, and put the enamels over it. Um, with my trash can. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll make the Um When you're using enamel products for rust, sometimes enamels tend to, sometimes if you use them in large amounts, They'll dry. They might be a little satin in areas. Um, wow. If you use them, <laughs> if you use them in small amounts, like on chipping effects, I can show you on there. They're fine if you use them in small amounts. But if you use them in large amounts, like I'm going to use on here, you might sometimes want to add some pigments to them too, just because to, the pigments will help them dry very matte. 
So let's um, hold on a second. Let me just um, clean this. Let's just go ahead and clean this out. You're calling these pigments? Uh, no, those are that's uh, those are enamels right there. Anything with these blue mm. type lids, uh, they're all pigments. Okay. okay. I'm not all right. That's a good question. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to run to the bathroom after and steal toilet paper. <laughs> You didn't bring that with you? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, um, I brought a roll. I thought that would be enough. I, I didn't know you guys were going to want to go all the way through, but that's fine. That's a wilder, wilder workshop. A little roll. embossing of a wilder. I thought you could bag those and sell them too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that toilet paper? No, that's a wilder workshop valve. And then all my, all my, and all my enemies will be using it for something else. <laughs> When you paint like this kind of thing and then you do the streaking, uh, yeah. did you do that before it was put together or do you do it uh, after you put the side there? The, the, the paint? Yeah. You know, I did that after the, it was just the weather effects. It was some of the last effects I did. Yeah. During the, um, I know. See, I could bring in something like this and do a seminar on it, but it would take a, uh, you know, take most of the day, and um, I, I it just take a lot of time. You know, maybe another year, if you guys are interested, we can do that. You know, we can spend a day doing that. Yeah. But I, I can only do like one side or something. But that's all we need to do, right? I'm like even now with this, I'm just trying to show you guys what's available and what different techniques you can use, and uh, it's. But in this thing, you had the tracks were not on. I take it. Oh no, I don't put. I leave. That's a good question. Actually, I leave all the running gear, like the wheels, the drive sprocket, oh. and the, uh, the is it the idler wheel? Yeah. Yeah. And the return rollers right. and the track right. separate while I'm weathering. I paint the track separate. That's another great thing about through model tracks. They're worthless. You can lay them right out flat. Yeah. And you can yeah. just you know it's great, great, okay. great stuff. It's you good. It's good for the soul. Yes, sense. I do. Yep. Yeah, we have our own too that I use oh. also and. So let me just go ahead again with these yeah, nitro products. Are they? Yeah. 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 Ye
a little bit of a rainbow shimmer to it. It's like, oh. and it was a 170 second scale tone. Yeah, wow. and it looked immaculate, but yeah, the tone was blue. Oh, wow. he, no matter what, he, no, it was blue. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even all the steps on, like the way I put on those coats there, those on different, different tones of, I don't have any on my shirt yet. Um, you know, you don't even necessarily have to put them on in that order. You know. Again, it's pretty easy stuff. It makes it so good and we'll continue on. Okay, so again, now when we're using large amounts, when we're using these rust tones in large amounts of areas, I tend to sometimes mix them with pigments. Hmm. To make sure, just to help them ensure that they're matte. Um, let's see. You don't have these nice little covers anymore. You have to twist on ones. I kind of miss these things a little bit. Did I use this cup? Well, you should have some input into that. I was going to say. Oh, I do. It's just company stuff, you know. <laughs> All right. Cost control. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, some of them opened up when we were shipping them to oh. customers. Yeah. And, you know, they have a ruin. Well, the on. vibration, they kind of unscrewed. <laughs> we don't know what happened, but we're like, ah, oh, okay. We'll just, uh, all right, let's see. I strongly worded email. It'll be a next product before you sell those flip caps separate. <laughs> there you People go. Warm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Switch That's them time. out. All right, where's that guy? Here we go. All right, so. Okay, you guys remember how I did those earth tones, right? Mm hmm. Well, we're going to do this the same way. We're going to put them on. So you're just doing random spots? Yes, yes, sir. Just like that. Okay. And um, hold on a sec. Let me get some enamel thinner. Where's my enamel thinner? You put two pools, okay? One to clean the brush, and one to have fresh thinner to go through. Yeah. Or, you no, know, I'll just use this. This might work too. So, uh, okay, does everybody see that? And now we're going to use this to subtly blend all of our. Um, um, we're going to use this to blend all of our initial tones that we put on the, from the acrylics, okay? <laughs> and again, and these are fun techniques too. It's, it's just so if you're thinning it out this way, why did you intentionally dry it a little? With the airbrush, because um, you well gotta skip I, that step. Well, I don't want to. Well, you, I guess you can. You know, like you can put it on like this, and then just use. <coughs> it all depends on what you want to do. Oh, okay. You know, do your different effects with it. That you can brush on a more um, more opaque layers. Keep the sides kind of clean, so I can show the length edges. Because um, it's more of a lighter orange rust effect too. And same thing. You can just you know, make a lighter orange tone. Focus more toward the um, 
outer edges. And I'll, I'll put some tool over that die. You know what? I'll, I'll make even a lighter tone. We'll put it over our. Okay, can everybody see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow dry this. Yeah, it's a lot. Just one minute, okay, everyone. Again, we're just gonna go through with a, and we're just gonna kind of blend everything carefully. So that's kind of done. Now we're done the next step, and we used all the um, uh, the enamel rust tones in the pigment to add more rust to work in conjunction with the sponge on the base coat. Okay, so we're kind of working up in layers. Now, just um, to show you what else you can do if you if you if you choose to do so, I'm going to go back over it now, and I'm going to airbrush on just a little bit of a, a dark gray to reduce some of the rust. Okay, so if you don't like what, if you're not content with all your your rust areas, you can go back over it with a gray tone, okay? So let me just clean this out for you, for all you real quick. So are you using the gray as kind of a filter or just uh, on targeted areas? On targeted areas, that's a, the best way to put it, I think, okay? Um, let's see, I'm running out of paper towels and everything here. Pete, why you go to um, You know what, I might need some, Sean. Pete, why don't you go? Oh, Pete. Oh, beautiful. Great. If you need something right now? Um, I think I'm all set at the moment, Sean. I'll just, you know, my hands are a mess, but it's part of the job. Okay. Yeah, no, this looks quite realistic. You think so? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I want to show you a few more things that you can yeah, do. They're already, they're already, yeah, yeah. All the different colors you can have. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's fun to play with the colors that, that you are. Oh, yeah, I know. I wish I, you know, I, I didn't know you guys would have so much questions because I've never quite done it like this before. And I wanted to, you know, I could have brought some yeah. photos and some stuff and shown <laughs> you just exactly what you can do with this because it's just. Yeah. Now, you've placed these pigments inside the paint that you painted on, on. Yeah, because when you're working with enamel, sometimes you'll have some satin areas. It's just a, it's just a, um, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's just the, um, the nature of the paint. It's just the property. So by adding these pigments, the pigments will help it to dry out a much more amount. But the, I don't think I understand. The pigments diffuse or the pigments... Stay, uh, no, the pigments in the in the fillers inside the pigments will have to make it matte. Yes, it just makes it's just the way the pigments are designed. They, they make it more 
I think what he's asking do the pigments dissolve in the paint? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, they're real fine. Sure, they'll dissolve. Well, when you think oh, about okay. it, when you, got, was... when you got paint, it's paint is only like the agglutin and the pigments that give it the color. The agglutins will help it stick. That's beautiful stuff. And uh, you just add in basically more pigments to the paint to alter the tone, to help it dry more matte. You know, does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, could give make it a little more opaque, a little thicker. You know, it's great for weathering tones. And just if uh, say there's some areas I'm not happy with, I'm just gonna um, add a little bit of the pigment itself is basically insoluble. It depends on the, the, yes. the particle size. You get microns and nano yep. microns, or you know millimeters or rocks like you get down is, at the. Is there a, a a substance that you know how when you, you touch something it's turn yeah. rust it's kind of like flaky right mm -hmm. so uh, is there a substance that you use to give that effect or did i misunderstand when 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 okay before i thought the pigments were kind of like oh something that would uh like give it kind of a you know kind of a rough effect you hit a powdered effect you mean you know something something's rusted this is rusted Real rusted. Oh yeah, you add and pigment, you push it, it'll yeah. give it more of a sure. It'll give it give it more of that grainy effect. Yeah. And make it a okay. little more sure. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind that what you see when you look at a rusty piece of metal, you shoot that down 35 times. You're not going to see that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, what was that? No, I didn't. I, I, I said when you think about what you see, if you walk up to a piece of con a rusted construction equipment and feel it and feel feel yeah, how rough it is. That you you shrink that down 35 times, you're not going to be able to feel it. You're not, not, not going to get you that much texture. Rubbing, it'll go away. Well, right. you're not going to get that kind of texture right. so we're talking about scale. You can still be in scale. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Even I was yeah. like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I wasn't wording it well. The, 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 if you try to, if you get that, if you get the texture <coughs> and you can see it on 35th scale, it's going to be overscaled. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Now I guess. Gotcha. And that's why, too, like I was saying, rust has a very grainy effect to it, okay? That's why it's matte, and that's why dust always adheres to it so quickly. So there's always dust on rust. Okay, now what we'll do is, and here's another way you can add um, even more rust tones here. And you can, well, I don't know, it's 12 o'clock, I already know what so... too much you can just go back over it and blend it in areas. Get rid of the excess on the paper. And just um, You can see these fine little specks of rust, and um, again, you can go just go back and forth with your different rust tones until you get <coughs> something that you're more or less happy with.
Hmm. Riding uh, more glossy materials. <coughs> and I focus them too. You can focus this effect a little bit on the darker areas as well. Give you a random um, satin area, mostly over the mill scale. What are you putting on now? Is that graphite? Yep. Mm -hmm. Does it matter the letters and numbers associated Not with that really. pencil? No, you can even get it in pigment form too. I have it, I just forgot to bring it. So I'm using this. So when you have a, uh, as you know with your um, hard ox, um, when you have a plate of steel, it's going to have the matte rust areas because rust is always matte, but you're also going to have the random um, uh, the satin areas too where all the mill scale is, you know? So it came out pretty good actually. It's always nice when the seminars go well. <laughs> there you go. There's your piece of steel. Spike Pete. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, would you guys? Do you guys want me to move on to the third thing of chipping? You guys all want to stay around? Would you, would you guys be interested? In okay, let me run to the bathroom and wash my hands real quick. Um, this. Sh yeah, remember, there's no toilet I'm paper back there. Stop this. Stop this. <laughs> 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 Use your uh, left hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll start another one. I'll get all cleaned up too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so they shake with their right. 